If you drive far enough to the remote sage lands of Oregon's outback, you might spot this trailer. It looks like a homemade tiny house, and in some ways it is, but it's also a factory and a classroom and an expression of the DIY life forged by these two, Kristen Bromas and Michael Lish. You good to go? Yeah, they're ready for you. Michael and Kristen host a two-day workshop where people come from all over the world to build their very own set of one-of-a-kind skis. When people find out about us, they want to come to where we are because they're coming to natural places that are incredibly beautiful and create an amazing backdrop for building their ski. So we're going to start from the very end. Yeah, I'll get you started. We've had seven-year-olds up to 80-year-olds come by and build their own skis. And then you'll start to see your ski getting formed. OK, you're good to go. The participants for this workshop are a European father and daughter team, Attila and Francesca. So F102, but I don't see 102 there. Just go to 90 yeah, and go to H, and you're fine. OK, so one of you can hold it, and the other one lock it. All right, Mike. Nice, and then you're going to move down, hold it. Attila skis a little. Francesca has never skied before. Very good. Keep going. Beautiful. That's good. Okay. So it can be intimidating for some to think, I don't know anything about ski design. I don't even really know much about how I ski in a sense. So how am I going to design a set of skis? But it's not like that. It's having a conversation with somebody who knows what you say and how to take that and turn it into a perfect, basically custom fit ski for you. Nice, ski looking. <laughs> ski looking? <laughs> Every part of the process, it gets to look more and more like a ski. <laughs> okay, so now we need to just put some super glue on these edges. Okay. One of the things that we realized in the workshop is the tools and the process had to be accessible to the participant and safe. You got it? You can go ahead and shoot it? Yeah. So, yeah, use two hands. Just, yeah, there you go. Don't bend it, you break it. They are part of 90% of the process, and we're right there alongside them, step by step, making sure they don't make any mistakes and making them feel confident and safe. Both of you will help each other when you okay. cut. Excellent. I think one of the cool things about watching someone build their own skis is that first process, which is routing, shaping the cores. The router is, it's a pretty gnarly tool in the sense of what it does. It has a kind of high pitched noise and it's heavy and it's, it's kind of awkward. It's not an intuitive tool and most people, unless you're a cabinet maker, really haven't ever used a router, really even been around a router. So it's cool to see, especially a young person or a young woman, to just pick up that router and just go for it. <laughs> All right, we'll take this one off. Very good. We don't think that custom should be just for what people think of custom. You know, it's for somebody who has a lot of money and they're expert skier. We think that it's just the better way to buy a set of skis. It's just gonna be a better experience in the end. Whether you're a first time skier like Francesca, who's never skied before, this, these skis are gonna be even more amazing for her, her on her first run because she's connected to her skis and now she's gonna be connected to skiing on those skis with her dad. And it's just gonna be this wonderful memory. Beautiful. Michael and Kristen started in California and moved their ski making trailer around the West, eventually settling hundreds of miles from any major ski resort. They now call remote Lake County home and have started forging their distinct DIY homestead at the intersection of two rural routes. Highway crews used to park their heavy equipment at this intersection and created a thick base layer of gravel. Our world is trailers. So I looked at Chris and I go, you know how much money that is in just the groundwork alone? And we could turn our trailers around all day long if we wanted to. I like the aspect that we can move around and change our perspective. It's kind of like that rearranging the living room to give new life to that space. 
It's just things don't get stale if you can just move them. They started with one homemade trailer, then built another, and then another, and then converted some shipping containers, fabricating everything from gathered pieces. I like going out into the desert for a walk with the dogs and finding a piece of old wood that's been sitting there probably for 50, maybe 100 years, and then being like, hmm, I wonder what we could do with this. And then Michael turns it into like this cool window or a doorknob. I like seeing what he's going to do with it. Okay, so the next part of the process is where we're going to take all the layers that we've prepped and basically bond them all together. So once this is mixed up, we're just going to use our hands to spread all this out. And you're trying to create a nice, thin, even layer. So make sure you push the resin up into all those little spaces. And if you have a little bit in one area, not so much in the other, just move it around. Fun. <laughs> yes, this is, I would say, the more relaxing part of the process. OK, that looks great. And the graphics for this ski is a panorama a black and white panorama photograph of some mountains. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the graphics are perhaps the most noticeable and distinctive aspect of the custom skis. Michael and Kristen have made hundreds of skis, but each set is individually designed. So graphics are super fun. I love doing it. The client will send me a concept, an idea, whether it's abstract or more concrete, and maybe they'll send me a bunch of images, maybe they'll send me just one image. Once I have a sense of what they're looking to achieve, I go into Photoshop and I start kind of playing with all these different images. And it's a total reflection of what they love, that, that color, that design, that photograph, that picture of their kid, their dog, um, whatever it is, they just get so connected to it. And then let's get rid of this real hard zone here. And then they're proud of it. They're proud to display it when they're on the chairlift and talk about, yeah, these are my graphics, and this is this, and this is that, and this is why it's on here, and I made these skis. And so it's just, it's just a wonderful part of the whole experience and the whole conversation. Wow, look at that. <laughs> These are amazing. Yeah, I can't wait to see them in their final shape. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Since Francesca has never skied before, Michael volunteers to take her on her very first run with her new skis. Yeah, let's kind of start over here. Okay, I'm going to put the ski there <laughs> and then toe in first. Just going to step down. Nice. Okay, we're going to kind of aim this way a little bit. Good, good. For now, just kind of keep your feet together. Okay. I'm going to kind of move us that way so we lose some mm -hmm. speed. That's good. Just take your time. I'm skiing on my own skate that I made myself, so Beautiful. it's a great satisfaction. Beautiful. It's now great to put them on the snow. That way. Look at that. Nice. Oh, okay. And now the fact that go I made them myself, I don't know, it just adds something more to the experience overall because I made them. I'm. I'm here trying to learn myself, and it's just, it's amazing. Good. <laughs> he turned. Woo! <laughs> nice. OK, let's do it again. OK, let's go. <laughs> Kristen met Michael by answering a job posting. Michael had started making skis in a mobile workshop in Mammoth, California. His business was taking off, and he needed a business manager. Immediately when I first met Michael, I felt very comfortable with him. I felt, okay, this person is gonna, this is where I need to be right now. Okay, that goes here. You know, of course, living in a small space too, people are like, how do you do that if you're not together and you're living in this tiny space? But we just did, it just worked. We just had separate sleeping spaces and we kind of had our own routines and we just figured it out. We were business partners probably up until about five months ago. And then after 10 years in, in close proximity, I mean, all of our facilities have been small spaces. After about six months ago, we, we finally got together. 
So now we're a couple. Kristen learned ski making from Michael, but she added a new dimension to their business. Drawing from her background working in restaurants, she developed the House in the Fields. House in the Fields is a one table restaurant. A movable feast, you could say, with a changing view wherever it is parked. This is the way Michael and Kristen like to cap the workshop experience. And I think that all the things we've gone through over the years, the fact that we're here now and the vision we're putting forth that we're doing now and that we'll keep growing and developing, it's kind of exponential. The further along we get, the more we kind of feel like we get back from it. Getting inspiration for your next adventure. It's kind of why you're here, right? Well, you can support more of what we do on Oregon Field Guide and everything else you see on OPB by going to opb.org slash video and becoming a sustaining member.